Hello. I had something that was hot on my heart that I wanted to come and talk to you guys about. And it's about living artfully or embracing our innate artistry, which you already know that I'm super passionate about. It's about the idea that living artfully is an act of rebellion. Because our society is very good at encouraging artists and creatives to give up or that they're not good enough or that it'd be safer to shrink or hide or change or align more with the status quo. And many of us have gone along with that in one way or another at one stage or another. I know that I definitely have then we've made a bargain okay I'll, I'll hide pieces of myself away in order to fit in to be more accepted to get this job to earn this money to feel safe in this way and yet when we do that we don't at our core feel at ease we feel itchy we feel listless irritated and for me, I felt like a husk of myself. And I think we probably thought we would find belonging, something that we all yearn for. And yet we don't because we aren't truly seen or known for who it is that we are. Because we've sacrificed so much of what makes us unique of what makes us us, what feels true to us. Now, I want to be clear that I'm not talking about selling out. I'm not talking about you having a full-time job as something that's not creative. What you do for a living does not impact your capacity for artistry in my eyes. You can be practicing law and live artfully. You can be a teacher and live artfully. You can be a cleaner, an IT technician, a stay-at-home parent. None of that matters. Because if you're here, if you follow me, I know that artistry as an essence calls you. It's inbuilt. It's an intrinsic part of who you are. So I'm not talking about vocation. I'm talking about the way you move through the world, what lens you look at the world through, how you feel in your body, how you feel energetically, how you trust and honor what feels true to you, your capacity for awe, to, to welcome sensation, to deepen, to stay open. And this comes down to intention. So my first question to you is, how often are you landing in your artistry? How often are you embodying it? Now, I do this through practices, through rituals, through movement. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen my embodiment practice through writing, through singing. And it is very simplest through mindfulness when I walk down the street, when I'm interacting with the barista and ordering coffee, when I'm sitting at my computer. Every day, I make sure I touch back into that knowing as often as I can. And I'm not perfect, and I'm not expecting you to be perfect. It might be once a day. It might be 14 times a day. It doesn't matter. As often as we can. It's about landing back in the conviction that I am an artist first, coach second. That I am an artist whether I am making art or not. So this goes deeper than identity because you might be an artist first, accountant second. Right? 
It's not just the way you think about yourself. It's the way you hold yourself. It's the way you feel in yourself, the language you use, the way you feel and process your emotions or not. It's in your body, your energy, your life force. It is, it's hard to describe, but I know that you feel it when it's there and when it's not, when you feel vacant. And as I said, our society doesn't make room for this. It doesn't prioritize this for us. It doesn't, it often doesn't value this. Sometimes it will see it as other or unimportant or a waste of time. And we absorb that. But you have to fight for your artistry. Your voice and your perspective are not only valid, they are powerful. Your artistry is a dynamic way that you process and show up in this life. It's a way of transmuting your experience into something of meaning, of depth, of connection, of beauty. And you've probably witnessed this in other people, in the way that they live their lives, in the way that they show up. And you might feel this like yearning, this kindred connection. That's what I want. I want more of that. You owe it only to yourself to live with this lens firmly on, this intention firmly grounded. So my impassioned question to you today is, what is one way, one thing you can do to live life more through that lens, the lens you have always felt but sometimes sacrificed? What are practices and rituals that bring you back to that, that anchor you within that? What are ways of thinking about and feeling into the world around you, the relationships that you have? For me, the first thing that I usually need to do is slow down and stop living outside of myself and rushing to the next thing and living in the future quite so often. Once I do that, once I'm back in my body, then I can notice what is around me. Then I can take a breath. Then I can remind myself who I am. We are all perfectly imperfect. Yes, Scott. Hello. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Dean. How are you going? Thank you for being here. I'm um, in my impassioned TED talk. Um, so yeah, let me know how this is landing. Let me know. I love that Lynn said I needed to hear this today. You are so welcome. I'm so glad that you needed to hear this. Um, this is really important to me, obviously. And I wanted to create an offering, an invitation around this because I, I find that well, when I ran Embody Your Voice, it was, it was in a community that this really started to take hold. It start, we started to make magic together. It's in community that, that this really starts to solidify within us and it makes space for us to be seen and held and understood. And we hear other stories from other creatives that feel the same as us. So I've decided to hold space once a month for this uh, to create ritual around this idea of homecoming. The link is in the description or in my bio. And my new website isn't completely finished, but I was too excited to um, pull this together and have this conversation with you. So um, I thought that I would do it anyway. So uh, it's a space to anchor you back into the embodied remembering that creativity is an essence within you that can never 
be taken from you. It can never be snuffed out. And the experience is called unbind your artistry. It's a ceremony done through poetry, journaling, music, movement, meditation, and discussion with other creatives over Zoom. So everyone can join in. And it's a container that's dedicated to renewed devotion, to fresh perspectives, to healing, and to expression. So the first one will be held on February 7th for me, which is February 6th for many of you. And tickets are $99 Australian. There will be a recording of the session if you can't attend live. So if this speaks to you, wonderful. I hope that you'll join me in community with other artists, creatives who want to anchor back into this part of themselves. And if not, if you feel like you've got it yourself, like go for it. What matters to me is that you realize that this is important. Society might be telling you that it's not. It's telling you that you need to be this, you need to be better, you need to be constantly improving and striving and burying these you know, soft skills or these, um, this sensitivity away. No. This, these, these things are your superpowers. Your voice needs to be heard in this way. And in order for you to feel most alive, you need to be viewing life through this lens. No matter what you're doing, if you're doing the dishes, like you can actually still be in this energy. I'm not all the time, but I'm getting better at it. And it feels good. So it's always there. It's always been there. But you do have to tend to it. So I want you to start thinking about how you're living artfully, what that even means to you, what your artistry feels like in your body, how you express that, how you move through the world. So you don't have to be creating things. You don't have to be painting. You don't have to be singing. You don't have to be writing poems in order to be that, that embodied artistry, in order to be embodying that. So thank you so much for being here. Please let me know how this landed for you. Um, if you've got any questions, um, any feedback, I would love to hear it. I'd love to connect with you always. Um, hello, ponytails. <laughs> Hi, Mike. You speak with so much passion and hit so many bullseyes. Thank you, Scott. We're going to have to start calling you the gorgeous guru. Nope, not a guru. Definitely not a guru. <laughs> not on a pedestal. Um, I am just as human as you are and experience life in very much the same way. Um, as I said, you already have this artistry, this access to this, no matter what. You don't need me for that. But if you would like to come together in community, and it's like, I called it an IV drip for your creativity. If you need to remember, if you need to come back home into that remembering, that is what these sessions are for. Unbind your artistry. So I'm going to be holding them once a month. I hope that you will join me. Um, it's going to be very early my time to see if I can hit as many time zones as I possibly can. Um, but yeah, I hope to see you there. If not, I just hope to hear from you and I hope that you're doing really well. Look after yourselves. <laughs>